Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee have been out for some time now, and it's not all too surprising to see that many people have been taken away by the charm of these games. Even those people who were continuously hitting on the games before their release couldn't help but fall in love with these games, and the main reason for this is because of the game's brand new features. A lot of Let's Go's new exclusive features breathe life into the Kanto region and just make it feel a lot more fresh and dynamic. In prior Pokemon games, you go off on your own adventure, and sure you have your own Pokemon with you, but they're not really interacting with you all too much outside of battle. But now, it's not just about your own adventure anymore. It's about your adventure with your friends and your Pokemon. There are constant interactions between you and the Pokemon that make the world and the Pokemon feel so much more real. And while there are many new features that helped accomplish this, I'd say that there are 5 features that stood out from the rest that can be considered as the top 5 best features of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. These are 5 features that Let's Go introduced that are entirely new to the franchise, and even if some of them are not entirely new, they've been revamped to feel that way. And they all just add to the charm of these games in so many ways, making them the best part of these games, in my opinion of course. And while the games do have their flaws, for right now, I want to share my thoughts on which features I picked and why those 5 features made these games so great. So with everything out of the way, let's go over Let's Go's best features. Number 5. Legendary Boss Battles Now. I wouldn't want this feature to return in Generation 8 the way it is, cause I'm assuming that we're gonna have wild Pokemon battles return, but having added features for the battles against the legendaries of the Kanto region was definitely a great way to signify their importance. In most Pokemon games, the mascot legendary has something to do with the story, it has a few cutscenes, and then you go up against it in a regular battle, you throw a Pokeball, and done. Your legendary Pokemon battle was just piped up to be a regular Pokemon battle, intertwined with the story. Nothing else, really. Yeah, some legendaries outside of that are roaming or may have something cool about them, but they're just regular Pokemon battles. But in Pokemon Let's Go, every legendary has a unique cutscene that shows off something about the legendary that you're about to face off against. Then you face off in a battle against them with a timer. Did you hear that? A wild Pokemon battle in a Let's Go game. Oh, and uh, a timer. It's only after you beat the legendaries in the battle that you're able to catch them like how you normally would in Let's Go. But aside from that, their battles are made to feel like actual boss battles, and that's the main thing here. Sure, Kanto only has 4 legendary Pokemon, but even without any real story significance, they still felt important here. Now since other Pokemon games will have wild Pokemon battles, Game Freak will have to add something else to them to make those legendaries more significant. But even if it was just a quick little cutscene and a timer to every legendary battle, legendary Pokemon will still feel more worthwhile to go up against than regular Pokemon and really show off their significance in the Pokemon world, just like how the Kanto legendaries did in Let's Go. Number 4. Co-op Oh man, I never thought this feature would make it into a Pokemon game, but man am I glad it did. The ability to have a friend or family member join you in your adventure at almost any point in time with absolute ease is incredibly convenient, and just makes the adventure feel so much more grand. Sure, the co-op feature does have its flaws. For instance, you can't really do much as the second player, or progress the story, or anything of that sort. And we can't forget to mention how easy battles become, as it basically becomes a 2 on 1 fight for almost the entirety of the journey if you choose to play that way. But the co-op feature was largely made to have parents help their kids who may have difficulty playing video games, play the game, and have fun while doing so. You as the first player are basically like the teacher to the second, so I can be grateful for the thought and intention behind that. But even outside of that, just having another player in a Pokemon game with me, and not being underground, is just great. I do hope that this feature returns in future titles and gets expanded upon. Maybe before starting the game or activating the co-op feature, have a future that lets the game know if you want to make the game easier or harder by having the battles be 2 on 1 or 2 on 2, or by just having options in the games like Pokemon Professor and Friends on an Adventure. This way, depending on the option, the game knows which way you want to use the co-op feature and will adjust the game accordingly. Regardless, it's definitely a cool feature to have, and one that I'm hoping sets the groundwork for a much bigger feature in the future. Number 3. Partner Pokemon This will be all the way up at number 1, as this feature is probably the one that single-handedly makes the adventure feel like it's more about you and your Pokemon rather than just yourself. 
and a feature that allows for so much interactions between you and the rest of the world. But it's also a very limited feature, and one that actually serves as a double-edged sword, but we'll get to that in a bit. Your partner Pokemon Pikachu or Eevee are actually there for every bit of your journey, even if they're not in your active party. They just follow you around and interact with the people, the Pokemon, and the various different locations that you visit. And they're just by you at all times. Even when you get something like a gym badge, you don't just get the badge anymore. You and your partner both congratulate each other as you receive the badge, giving the sense that it was something that you both earned. Not to mention that the Pokemon in me of this game has been updated to make your Pokemon feel more expressive and real. But here's the thing, this feature has been made limited to only two Pokemon. I don't see how they could transfer this feature onto the upcoming 2019 Pokemon titles if we don't have a set partner Pokemon, which we probably won't as we'll more than likely have traditional starters who will evolve. It'd be great if we could have different partner Pokemon with us, but as of right now, that's just not realistic. On top of this, as great as the partner Pokemon feature is, it was also the cause for a lot of complaints in the game, as the partner Pokemon made the game a lot easier. Some people were complaining about wanting to evolve them, and a few other things, but they're all very minor complaints if you ask me, although I can see the issues that people would have with the limitations of the partner Pokemon. Regardless of what though, they were an invaluable part of the game for me. For something as simple as just being able to pick out what they wear, to them being the reason as to why we don't have HMs in the game, they were fantastic additions to the game, and Let's Go wouldn't have been the same without them. Number 2. Visible Encounters I remember back when I was younger, I'd wonder and talk to my friends about why the Pokemon games weren't like the anime. In the anime, you never had to step into wild grass to find a Pokemon. A Pokemon kinda just ran into you, or you ran into the Pokemon. And in Let's Go, well, you still have to step into the wild grass for the most part, but just like the anime, a Pokemon kinda runs into you, or you run into it. And this makes for a tremendous change in the way the game feels and how it functions overall. The encounters are still randomly generated, but the difference here is that out of the many randomly generated Pokemon, you choose whether you want to try and capture the Pokemon or not, and what Pokemon you try to capture is 100% your choice. This itself is a huge change and probably gave many players a breath of fresh air. But I'd say that, again, this just makes the games feel so much more lively. Wherever you go, you're surrounded by life. Before in whatever town or city you were in, you were surrounded by people and a few Pokemon. On the routes, maybe a few people, but for the most part, you're just getting by through a very empty location. But with this, nothing feels empty. Constantly wherever you go, you get the sense that you're never really alone and that there's so much more for you to know and learn about this world. Well, uh, that feeling kinda changes once you capture them all, but, but you get my point. Even though the encounters are still technically random, it's made to feel as if you have all the choice in the matter and that the encounters are more of a consequence of you exploring the world that you're in rather than just running into something unexpected. And them running around the overworld and doing their own thing just reminds you that these are actual creatures in this world. I know we probably won't see this feature again unless we get new Let's Go games, but this really made me appreciate all 153 Pokemon and their various forms, as they all behave differently and every single one of them just adds something unique to the world. Number 1. Pokemon Following You I know what some of you are thinking. Are you kidding me? This feature out of all things is the one that's still at the number one spot? What happened to only having new features on this list? Well, I think the feature has changed a lot since we've seen it in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But before we talk about that a bit, I'd like to talk about why these features are always so highly requested. If you really look at it, having Pokemon follow you doesn't really add much to the game. Yeah, in Let's Go the Pokemon following you may have found an item or two, but nothing crazy. And before that, all they really did was follow you. So why have people constantly been asking for this feature? Like I've been going on and on about in this video, I think without realizing it, people have just appreciated the following feature for how much life it brings into the Pokemon world. Just knowing that these Pokemon are behind you at all times says that, hey, these pocket monsters are actually on this journey together with you, and they're just as much part of this world as you are. Not only that, but for the sentimental value of the game, it kinda establishes more of a bond between the actual player and the Pokemon they use. When I was playing at one point, I made sure to have every species of Pokemon follow me for just a small duration of the game, just so I could learn more about the Pokemon, establish a connection with them, and have more fun using them. And it's not like the mechanic has just been a copy and paste from previous games. Every Pokemon has been made to walk in a unique and expressive way that just gives a sense of individuality to every species, even if they're from the same family. 
And the best part is that, since these Pokemon have more of a realistic size to them, you're actually able to ride a lot of the Pokemon that you'd normally be able to ride. It's not like Alola where you can ride one Pokemon for one purpose. Here, multiple ride Pokemon serve the same purpose. The difference is just, how do you want to travel? Do you want to gallop across Kanto in a majestic Rapidash, or take your time by traveling on the belly of a Snorlax? It's a change in addition to the games that gives every Pokemon a very unique feel, and a sense of individuality that's unprecedented in the Pokemon series. And while we only got this feature for 150 Pokemon in their unique forms, I'm really hoping that in the Generation 8 titles, we're able to use this feature with every single Pokemon. And there you have it guys! Those are my top 5 best features of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. But these games don't come without their shortcomings, so, so be sure to stay tuned and check out my video on the top 5 worst features of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to hit a bunch of like button if you enjoyed the video, and hit the dislike button if you didn't. Let me know how you feel, comment down below your thoughts and opinions, how do you feel about my top 5 list, and what do you consider to be the best features of Pokemon Let's Go? Let me know, share the video around if you want to help us with the channel, and finally, subscribe to the little bell icon if you want to stay up to date with all my content. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next video, alright? Later.